Did President Trump ask former FBI Director James Comey to shut down the federal investigation into retired General Michael Flynn, the national security advisor who survived just 24 days on the job? The New York Times reporting moments ago, the president said to Comey, I hope you can let this go. Comey was fired last week. Also tonight, the White House refusing to say whether President Trump gave the Russians classified information. Tonight, what the president is now saying himself. In other news, the deadly highway collision in the east along I-95. Several big rigs and cars colliding. The charred wreckage, the highway shut down. The tornado threat as we come on tonight, one on the ground just a short time ago. Millions in the path of the storms tonight. And the new caffeine concern. The 16-year-old who had a coffee and several other drinks with caffeine. The coroner who says it killed him. The new warning, how much caffeine is too much. This is ABC World News Tonight with David Muir. Good evening, and it's great to have you with us here on a Tuesday night, and we begin with that breaking headline as we come on the air. Tonight, our team now confirming a report late today in the New York Times that fired FBI Director James Comey wrote a memo documenting some of his interaction with President Trump. And tonight, this question, did the president ask James Comey to, quote, let this go? while talking about the investigation into this man, retired General Michael Flynn and Russia. Flynn, of course, resigned just a few days into the administration. Comey was fired one week ago tonight. ABC senior White House correspondent Cecilia Vega leading us off. Tonight, another bombshell at the White House. ABC News confirms President Trump allegedly suggested former FBI Director James Comey shut down his investigation into former National Security Advisor Michael Flynn. A source close to Comey tells ABC News Comey wrote a memo in February, the day after Flynn was fired. I hope you can let this go, the president allegedly told Comey. According to the source, he is a good guy. I hope you can let this go. The New York Times, who first reported the memo, says it was part of a paper trail Comey wanted to leave behind as evidence of what he called improper influence into his investigation. The Times did not view a copy of that memo, but says associates of Comey read it to a reporter. Tonight, the White House is disputing the story, saying in a statement, the president has never asked Mr. Comey or anyone else to end any investigation, including any investigation involving General Flynn. This is not a truthful or accurate portrayal of the conversation between the president and Mr. Comey. President Trump said Comey was fired because he was not competent, calling him a showboat. This galvanized many in the FBI, the acting director coming to Comey's defense last week. Is it accurate that the rank and file no longer supported Director Comey? No, sir, that is not accurate. But he also said you cannot stop the FBI from doing the right thing. So there has been no effort to impede our investigation to date. So let's get to Cecilia Vega with us live tonight from the White House. And Cecilia, the White House, I know, is denying this, but the New York Times report is based in part late today on two people who they say read the James Comey memo, part of a paper trail James Comey created to document what he believed, as the time puts it, were improper efforts to influence the ongoing investigation into Flynn and Russia? And again, David, yes, the Times says that they did not see this memo themselves, but they do so source these two people who they say read it. But the reaction has been pouring in. Democrats on Capitol Hill are already talking about the possibility, raising the possibility of obstruction of justice. That is, of course, a federal crime. One senator said that we may be talking about an impeachment process. And David, I just was speaking with a source on Capitol Hill. This just came in. I didn't think we could be stunned anymore. Given the past week, this blew that out of the water. That's the same reaction at the White House tonight, David. All right, another long night ahead for you, Cecilia, as well. I want to bring in our senior justice correspondent, Pierre Thomas, this evening, who covers the FBI. Pierre, you've actually confirmed this evening that Comey did write a memo to document his interaction with President Trump, and the source telling you that the president allegedly asked him to essentially go easy on Flynn? David, the source says he's seen the Comey memo, and he confirmed the quotes of the New York Times specifically, President Trump allegedly saying, I hope you can let this go. He's a good guy. David, what you're seeing is a lot of people who are coming to the defense of Comey who believe he's a man of integrity and honor. Not perfect, but a man of integrity. In terms of the mood at the FBI, they are professionals. They're carrying on their work. But make no mistake, many inside the FBI and a number of former agents I heard from directly are extremely angry at the way Comey was fired. They also openly reject the White House claims that Comey did not have broad support within the Bureau. 
and they're showing disdain for the president's description of Comey not being competent. They're now hoping for a new director who does not have any hit of partisanship. And while agents may have issues with the way Comey handled the Clinton email investigation, they still believe he was their guy. David. Pierre Thomas with us tonight as well, Pierre. Thank you. And of course, all of this comes as the White House refuses to say tonight whether the president gave classified information to the Russians. That headline broke last night as we came on. And overnight, our team could hear the yelling beyond the walls in the West Wing, not far from where the press was camped out. The president reportedly revealing classified information about an ISIS plot. That information coming from a U.S. ally who had not given permission to share it. Tonight, did the president's reveal put anyone, any sources who are already in harm's way, at greater risk? Here's ABC's chief White House correspondent, Jonathan Carl. As President Trump met with the president of Turkey today, he was hounded with questions. Did you reveal classified information to the Russians, sir? Mr. President, did you share classified intelligence information with the Russians? Thank you very much. But a little later, he touted his meeting with the Russians as a success. We had a very, very successful meeting with the foreign minister of Russia. Uh, our fight is against ISIS. At issue, what the president said when he met with the Russian foreign minister and ambassador in the Oval Office last week. The Washington Post first reported that the president shared highly sensitive classified information about an ISIS plot to target civilian airplanes with laptop bombs. Secret information, ABC News has learned, given to the United States by Israeli intelligence. Less than two hours after the story broke, the national security advisor emerged from the West wing to shoot it down. The story that came out tonight, as reported, is false. This morning, the president seemed to confirm that he shared sensitive information with the Russians, tweeting, as president, I wanted to share with Russia at an openly scheduled White House meeting, which I have the absolute right to do, facts pertaining to terrorism and airline flight safety. Today, McMaster was back, confirming many of the details in the Post story and not denying the information shared was classified. General, um, when you came out after the story broke, you said that the president did not disclose any sources or methods. He did not reveal anything about military operations. Why were you denying things that were not even reported? What the report said is that the president revealed classified information that had been shared by one of our allies in the Middle East. So the question is simply a yes or no question here. Did the president share classified information with the Russians in that meeting? And as I mentioned already, we don't say what's classified, what's not classified. What I will tell you again is that what the president shared was wholly appropriate. The story, the story combined what was leaked with other information and then, and, then, and then insinuated about sources and methods. So I wanted to make clear to everybody that the president in no way compromised any sources or methods in the course of this conversation. The story is a political nightmare for the Trump White House, especially because as a candidate, Donald Trump made such an issue out of Hillary Clinton's handling of classified information. We can't have someone in the Oval Office who doesn't understand the meaning of the word confidential or classified. Presidents have the authority to declassify anything. The question is, why would he share it with an adversary? The White House insists he was soliciting Russian help in the fight against ISIS. The Post story suggests Trump was trying to show off, quoting him telling the Russians, I get great intel. I have people brief me on great intel every day. McMaster said the president could not have told the Russians the source of the information because he didn't know the source. The president wasn't even aware you know, of where this information came from. He wasn't briefed on the source or method of the information either wasn't aware of where the information came from. Jonathan Carl with us live tonight as well. John, you were in that briefing room. The White House today did not seem concerned with the potential of classified information being given out. They made it clear the bigger concern here, in their opinion, is who leaked what happened. But, John, the initial call, the initial call of concern to the CIA and the NSA, you have reported, came from within the White House? Here's what we know. Shortly after that meeting with the Russians, a top official on the National Security Council here at the White House placed calls to the NSA and the CIA to inform them about what the president had said. So clearly there was enough concern here at the White House about what the president had revealed that they felt they needed to tell the CIA and the NSA. All right, John Carl, we know you'll stay on it. Thanks to you. And on Capitol Hill tonight, reaction pouring in on both fronts. On the reported pressure on James Comey to go easy on Michael Flynn, 
and on the classified information allegedly given to the Russians. Both Democrats and Republicans want the transcript now, the notes from inside that Oval Office meeting. ABC's Mary Bruce on the Hill tonight. Tonight, Republicans on Capitol Hill are alarmed and frustrated. Every ally would be concerned. Even the Senate Republican leader. I think it would be helpful to have less drama uh, emanating from the White House. But he's standing by the president. Do you have concerns about the president's ability to properly handle classified information? <laughs> no. Still, one of the president's top allies says the White House needs to get its act together. Obviously, they're you know downward spiral right now and have got to figure out a way to come to grips with all that's happening. What's your concern? Uh, just uh, a little more discipline and alignment over there. And tonight, both sides of the aisle are pressing for more information about that meeting with the Russians. If the president has nothing to hide, he should direct that the transcript of the meeting be made available. While other Democrats are pointing out what the president once said about Hillary Clinton. How many people, you know, were out chanting lock her up and Trump himself saying she was unfit to govern because of that. And here he is now releasing real secrets directly to the Russians. And the irony of that is pretty astounding. So let's get to Mary Bruce with us as well tonight from Capitol Hill. House members meeting tonight, Mary, with the CIA director, hoping to get more on the news uh, of James Comey and this reported pressure that was placed on him to go easier on retired General Michael Flynn. David, the House Intelligence Committee just finished meeting with the CIA director. They were hoping for answers, but emerged from that meeting facing even more questions. Now about that Comey memo, the top Democrat on the committee reiterating his calls for Comey to testify here on the Hill. David. Mary Bruce with us tonight as well. Mary, thank you. President Trump, it's believed in talking to the Russians in the Oval Office, was talking about an ISIS plot, what could be the biggest plot to take down a plane since 9-11. Tonight, by sharing that information, are the lives of sources now at greater risk? And what about our relationship with the ally who gave the White House that information in the first place? Here's ABC's chief investigative correspondent, Brian Ross, tonight. What's at risk tonight, according to current and former U.S. officials, is the life of a spy inside ISIS, placed there by Israel, providing sensitive information about terror plots against America on the condition the U.S. keep the source secret. The real risk is not just this source, but future sources of information about plots against us. The current intelligence from inside ISIS involves an active plot to bring down a passenger jet en route to the U.S. with a bomb hidden in a laptop that the U.S. believes can get through airport screening machines undetected. The information is so reliable that the U.S. is considering a ban on laptops on all flights from Europe to the U.S. The thing they want to do the most is have a large airplane blow up in flight. ISIS has already taken credit for blowing up a Russian airliner two years ago, killing more than 200 people, claiming the bomb was hidden in a soft drink can. The White House the National Democrats. Security Advisor says that justifies President Trump's disclosures to the Russians. This was the, 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 the context of the conversation in which it was wholly appropriate to share what the threat was as a basis for common action and coordination. But many in the counterterrorism community say what the president did was a mistake. Russia is not part of the ISIS coalition. They are not our partner. And Brian Ross with us now. Brian reported there that it's believed it was Israel, our ally, who gave us that information. A lot of people are pointing to the fact that if this classified information was given to the Russians, they could then give it to players who are not clearly friends of Israel. That's right, David. Russia is known to trade information with lots of countries that are hardly friends of the U.S., including Iran, which is, which is also a sworn enemy of Israel. All right, Brian Ross with us again tonight. Brian, thank you. We do have other news we're following at this hour. A fiery crash on I-95, several big rigs and several cars involved. The highway shut down in both directions. Part of it still closed as we're on the air. Here's ABC's Steve Osinsami. The fire caused by this accident was so great you could see it from the sky for miles. It closed Interstate 95 in both directions near the North Carolina and South Carolina border. Police working the scene tonight say that the southbound lane where the accident happened won't reopen until at least midnight. At least four people were killed after a crash involving three tractor trailers and three smaller vehicles. 
Witnesses say the fuel tank of one of the large trucks caught fire. The leaking fuel then spread the fire to the other vehicles. The flames moved over the highway and into nearby woods. Drivers are having to work their way around the scene. One of the trucks was carrying hazardous chemicals, but authorities say there's no reason for concern or evacuations. David? Steve, thank you. Now to the weather and what could be a dangerous night ahead. Tornado watches in eight states at this hour. Ominous skies. At least three tornadoes reported already. One on the ground as we came on. This one touching down in McLean, Texas, just a short time ago. Let's get to Chief Meteorologist Ginger Z. She's tracking the severe weather threat tonight. Hey, Ginger. David, a tornado on the ground right now in Wisconsin, just east of Rice Lake in that northwest region you see in the tornado watch there. Also, that particularly dangerous situation in western Oklahoma and Texas, that's where those supercells already have been putting up tornadoes. Severe thunderstorm watch in the middle. Tomorrow, the threat stays with us, and ahead of all that, we could near record highs right here along the east coast as we near the end of this.